You know, motorcycle riding in the Black Hills of South Dakota is a bombardment of the senses. It's an elixir for the soul, truly. I think racing is, is the absolute core of the rally, racing and riding in the hills. I can remember when we stood in front of the shop and encountered 300 motorcycles were going to the Mount Rushmore tour. Nobody had ever seen 300 motorcycles together. Couldn't know known at that time it would develop to be the biggest motorcycle rally in the world by far. Join us for an exclusive inside look. Connect with racers, gearheads, and others pursuing their passions. Welcome to the Amsoil Signature Series. My name is Jack Hoyle and my dad and mother are credited as being the founders of the Motorcycle Rally. I was born in 1935 and the first official rally was held in 1938 and I can't remember what, what my first rally was that I do remember, but I can remember when we stood in front of the shop and counted 300 motorcycles were going to the Mount Rushmore tour. And that was awesome. Nobody had ever seen 300 motorcycles together. Highway patrol out in the lead, pick up in the back to catch any stragglers. And that was awesome, 300 motorcycles. Now there's that many parked around any bar. And it, it is awesome. When I, when I was a little boy in my dad's motorcycle shop here, he was an Indian dealer, and they had posters and stuff on the, he'd tack them up on the wall from the Indian company. They ruled a half mile in those years. They had this famous Indian wrecking team, they called them. And here's guys like Bill Tooman and Bobby Hill, the best rider in the nation. They'd show up here and come back in my dad's motorcycle shop and might work on their motorcycle all night long. But here I was just a little kid and my heroes we're right here in my own dad's shop. Well, racing started this thing. It was the first half mile races and then later developed into hill climbs and short tracks and everything else. But the competition is the, is the reason for having this whole thing. short story is, Pappy Hoyle would say to the young guys, if you think you're any good on that motorcycle I just sold you, you come back here the first week of August and we'll have races in the field back here. And that field and that first outing of nine guys was the genesis of the rally. Every year they came back, brought more friends, the races became a little bit bigger. Uh, by gosh, now for the, the 77 years that the rally has gone on, the races have been a very big part of it. Flat track racing is the original extreme sport in America. And the young guys that do the flips on their bicycles are going to start watching those guys at 110 miles an hour going around a half mile and say, wow, that works. I think racing is, is the absolute core of the rally. Racing and riding in the hills. They, they, that's what they did in 1938. They rode here through beautiful country, had good food, and they went racing. And, uh, uh, they didn't have bands and they didn't have big light shows, they, uh, they rode motorcycles. But I tell people, I'd rather lose a race out, out here at Sturgis Rally, the rally and races, than win anywhere else in the world. You know, motorcycle riding in the Black Hills of South Dakota is a bombardment of the senses. It's, it, it's beautiful to the eyes, it's sweet to the smell, it's an elixir for the soul, truly. There's nothing better than getting up early in the morning before everybody hits the road and I can get up in the hills, wick the throttle up, you just get lost in, in everything and in the beauty and just, it's just a place for me to unwind, really. There's a lot of beautiful places in the world, and the Black Hills are one of them. The way the weather and the roads and the topography, they're, they're, they're beautiful. There's big sweeping corners. Every time you come around a, a corner, there's a new vision, a new vista. Pappy Hoyle was known for taking in guys that were driving cross country after World War II. There was no VA in those days. Those guys came home from Europe. Shell shock was the term in those days. He would feed them. He would give them a place to sleep. He would fix their motorcycles, and he would say, I know you don't have any money right now, 
send me a check in when you can. People don't understand us motorcycle folks. We need to be brothers to one another. We need to look out for one another. Be on your way. And, and by God, I like to think that anytime two bikers meet each other on a street corner anywhere in the world and go, hey bro, how you doing? And a lot of that brotherhood started right here and with him.